let me start with the first question. It's the anniversary, the 20th anniversary since Zinjic's death. He was assassinated in Belgrade on March 12, 2003. Um, with this assassination, many consider the stop of Serbian transition from an autocratic communist system to a democratic one. How would you comment on this? Zoran Zinjic had the vision of Serbia as an open and democratic society based on uh, individual rights and freedoms and the vision of Serbia as a developed country that is part of Euro Atlantic community. Uh, today we witness that uh, we are far uh, away from uh, this original vision of Zoran Djindjic and the Serbia is currently not not yet a member of, uh, of the EU, not even the NATO as well. And uh, today we witness that um, rule of law and democracy are in retreat. Uh, and the um, country is still run by reactionary and nationalist forces that were in power during the 90s, that uh, constantly challenge that vision of uh, Zoran Djindjic. Uh, One of the main problems is that political establishment uh, in Serbia uh, present themselves as those who are the successors of Zoran Djindjic and uh, that they wanted to overtook uh, the vision of Zoran Djindjic and wanted to actually work on Serbia's accession to European Union and to like uh, modernize uh, Serbian society. However, in practice, they did completely uh, the opposite. Uh, by promoting uh, mostly Russia and China in Serbia, uh, by demolishing democratic institutions, they moved the country far away from European values and uh, Euro-Atlantic community. Um, also today, the, uh, those who are the successors of Djindjic, most members of the Democratic Party, somehow um, didn't manage to actually uh, to fulfill that Zoran Djindjic's dream. Um, they, they are responsible, they, they have very uh, big responsibility uh, for the creation uh, of the current uh, Serbian Progressive Party. Can you maybe elaborate a bit why that is? Why does the Democratic Party, Djindjic Party, have had influence in the creation of this right now system which we have under Aleksandar Vucic and SNS? Okay. The Democratic Party of Serbia uh, contributed uh, to, the, uh, to the creation of the Serbian Progressive Party a long time ago uh, because they wanted to actually uh, have the share of power and to somehow um, influence the, the radical elements in society and try to modernize them and to turn them into the party that will be uh, acceptable for, for them as oppositions. Mm -hmm. That didn't turn out well at the end because um, they lost the elections in 2012 and the Serbian Progressive Party uh, won the election and is running the country uh, until 2012. Um, but they rebrand themselves as um, Europeans, although among them there are a lot of radicals uh, within the party that continue uh, to lead the country and promote radical nationalistic uh, views. They are quite dominant and they are completely in opposite uh, to the values and uh, policies that uh, Zoran Djindji promoted a uh, long time ago. Uh, when we have the situation which is current in Serbia with uh, the uh, not so much present media freedom, the suspension of several civil rights and so on and so on, 
Um, there were some kind of demonstrations going on, especially in the COVID-19 period during the pandemic against Vucic's regime and the current government. But still, the demonstration did not uh, succeed to, to, to being still alive, let's say, until this day. So if we look back to Zoran Djindjic and to the Otpor and this whole movement against Sloboda Milosevic during the 90s and the motivation they had had during those times, how can we compare Djindjic's legacy in this term? if you understand what I mean. So how can maybe Jinjit's legacy live on today to motivate young people or generally activists to kickstart a new kind of demonstrations, peaceful demonstrations for the acquiring of rights which were lost during the last 10 years? Zoran Jinjit was the first post-communist leader in the country, first post-communist prime minister. Even during his life and term as a prime minister, he was challenged. Uh, he was discredited. Um, and that led afterwards to his, um, to his association, assassination. Uh, after like 20, 20 years, uh, what we have seen that um, those pro-democratic forces in Serbia exist but they're much smaller than they were in the, during the 90s at the beginning of the 20s. Uh, and it is very hard to mobilize uh, people in Serbia to uh, support democratic values um, uh, currently. And uh, one, of the, one of the, I would say, results of the, um, of the Serbian progressive party in, uh, in power is that um, Serbian Progressive Party managed to marginalize opposition, mm -hmm. democratic opposition in Serbia by taking over the media, by taking over uh, public institutions, state institutions, and uh, these pro-democratic uh, um, forces in Serbian society are constantly weakened and systematically weakened by the political establishment. And uh, new leaders um, in, in our society that promote that vision and values of Zoran Djindjic uh, are no longer only those that we knew uh, before, such as Democratic Parties of Serbia. I believe that, that new leaders that want to change uh, the society and improve um, the society are those who are coming from you know, ecological movements, for, from different civic movements uh, that we have seen at the local level, but also uh, in Belgrade. But um, those are the like new, mm -hmm. new leaders, but uh, they need to gain uh, more popular, popular vote, they need to gain more strength uh, in order to become more vocal and more dominant uh, power in, in the society. Last but not least, um, it has been 20 years since the assassination of late Prime Minister Djindjic. How would you see Serbia in the next 10 years? Do you maybe see a kind of a revival of, of his vision of uh, an Euro-Atlantic Serbia, Serbia which is a member of the EU, Serbia which is on the western part of the, of the world and not on uh, neutral ge geopolitical uh, game playing between west and east. How would, you, how would you elaborate on that? Where would you see Serbia in the next 10 years regarding Jinjit's vision? After the uh, assassination of uh, Prime Minister Djindjic, that somehow slowed down uh, many reform processes in Serbian society. And uh, we are still struggling to implement fundamental uh, reforms in Serbia. We see uh, that justice is very slow in Serbia, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the trial of those who not only killed, but we still don't know in Serbia who actually ordered mm. the murder of uh, Zoran Djindjic. So we still 
haven't uh, finalized that kind of process. We haven't reached the truth mm. uh, about the whole truth about his killing. Uh, and today, although like there is formal rhetoric that uh, uh, Serbia is in the process of um, uh, EU integration, uh, but in practice we are far away from uh, becoming mm. a full-fledged EU member. So there is a lot of work to be d done uh, and uh, we need uh, more of like democratic leaders uh, with that vision of Zoran Djindjic that will lead to uh, not only for Serbia to become a developed country, but democratize and modernize uh, as a society. Uh, but today uh, we see that uh, there are a lot of reactionary forces, including the right wing groups and the church that is opposing to that uh, uh, different vision that uh, Jinji had. And they promote more collective values and collective identity that uh, contrary to what uh, Zoran Jinji actually promoted. Um, also what is worth, uh, worth noting is that um, uh, there are many groups, including political parties in power, that want to erase the legacy of uh, Zoran Djindic and what he did before. So this is quite active. Uh, and a long time ago, uh, that process started in 2012, when uh, the current political establishment wants to erase uh, collective memory of 5th October and what 5th October meant to the society and want to erase what Zoran Djindic did or wanted to do to transform Serbian society uh, and the state. So these forces are still uh, in power and in a 10 years uh, since now I don't see that um, I believe that they will be dominant. Their, their like vision of the society will be uh, still dominant. Hmm. Thank you very much for this interesting interview, Maya. Thank you.